This week I want to talk about this painting by John Everett Millay, an English painter. This is Christ in the House of His Parents, painted between 1849 and 1850. This is during the time of the Industrial Revolution. We've, we've just had the 1848 Revolution in France, and this really marks uh, the beginning of the age of realism, realism with a capital R. And we've talked about realism, uh, particularly the realism of Gustave Courbet, who was the founder of this movement, as a as a rejection of romanticism, which had pervaded the art world nearly a century before and had basically stuck around until this time of the Industrial Revolution. I like this painting because we're gonna we're kind of gonna use it as a springboard to talk about a lot of different topics that we've discussed in previous videos. So I'm gonna put links or annotations or whatever to some of those previous topics. But Millet was not technically considered a realist. He was he's really better known as a founder of this pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, which we haven't discussed. But it was a um, kind of an association of painters that was founded by Millet and two other artists known as uh, Hunt and Rossetti. And the pre-Raphaelites believed that the classicism of the Renaissance artists, like Raphael, Michelangelo, had really damaged the way that art was being taught in the academies. Because at this point, after the Italian High Renaissance, the manner, the kind of the pedagogy of art, the manner in which it was taught became based almost entirely on replication of conventional techniques. So art students were expected to basically learn by rote through copying the Renaissance masters. Those tendencies to kind of to, to learn art by copying classical methods emerged out of the Renaissance then into mannerism, which we've discussed previously as well. And the the art world, according to the Pre-Raphaelites, never really recovered from this disservice that, that the uh, the Renaissance artists like Raphael had had uh, kind of inspired through their styles. So the Pre-Raphaelites wanted to return to a more precise and attentive observation of nature that wasn't classicistic. So we're talking about attention to, to heavy detail, vibrant color, and really in a, in a philosophical sense this kind of existentialist idea of personal development of the artist and the artist's style through their development of unique methods and, uh, and ways of seeing, their methods of depiction. So the individualized observation of, of nature or reality as it's perceived by the ordinary individual was really crucial to the development not only of the style of the pre-Raphaelites, but, as I've already mentioned, crucial to the development of realism, which would then go on to be more formally defined by artists like Courbet. So talking specifically about this painting, it's, it's obviously uh, religious in subject, and this is, is problematic. Why? Well, because this is a very impious way of representing the Holy Family compared with the way that they were traditionally presented in medieval art or Renaissance art. You can see the setting here is just basically an ordinary 19th century English carpentry shop. We have these planks of wood that are resting along the wall here in the back. You can see the amount of debris and wood shavings that are, that are kind of scattered all over the floor here. Now what's happened here is Jesus has cut his finger on a nail that's in his father's carpentry shop and he's being comforted by Mary here who kind of seems to be offering Jesus maybe a kiss on the cheek. In the background behind Mary here we have Saint Anne, Jesus's grandmother that was Mary's mother who appears to have maybe removed this nail with this pair of pliers that we see sitting on the table. This is Joseph of course Jesus' father, and he appears to be constructing, constructing some sort of a, a door here on his table. And then we have this boy over here who's kind of interesting. This is John the Baptist. You see that he's carrying this bowl of water. He's wearing his, uh, his fur pelt here in the traditional manner in which he was represented in, in Renaissance art as well. The very first painting of the video, uh, painting of the week video ever made was on da Vinci's John the Baptist, so you can look at, uh, look at that to learn a little bit more about uh, how John the Baptist is traditionally depicted in art. As I said, he has a very important symbolic role, of course. He's carrying this bowl of water to Jesus, which symbolizes his eventual um, baptizing of Jesus in the Jordan River. We have this triangle directly above Jesus' head. I did not do a good job outlining that. Triangle. There it is. And a triangle, of course, has three sides and it has three points. And the number three is very important in religious symbology because it represents the Trinity. We also have this ladder, which could represent a couple things. Um, the first thing that came to mind for me was an Old Testament symbol, right? We have Jacob's ladder. It could also be um, 
a reference to, to the crucifixion, right? Like the big ladders that they would they would use to build the crosses. And then we see this dove sitting on the ladder. And of course, we know that the dove is an important symbol of, of the Holy Spirit. Outside, we have these sheep, of course, which could represent, we know Jesus as, you know, herding his flock. He's the good shepherd. And then this man right here, who's Joseph's assistant, could represent kind of um, the apostles, the apostolic, the apostolic mission. Jesus himself also has some important marks right here. You can see where the nail has punctured his hand. And also, and this is hard to see, but on his foot as well, we can see evidence of the stigmata. And stigmata, right, is a Greek word. Stigma was Greek for um, like a mark or like a tattoo that they would use to brand slaves or animals. And in theology, of course, it refers to the markings that would have been on Jesus's hands and feet from where the nail went through his, uh, his wrist and feet. And, of course, in this case, we have uh, kind of the, the, the obvious interpretation of, okay, well, he's cut his, his hand on a nail, so we see the, the cut in his hand. And then, of course, it has the much more extended allegory of this representation of the stigmata, like I said, his eventual fate of crucifixion. As I said before, this painting was fairly controversial. Charles Dickens trashed it, um, talking about how Jesus looked like this kind of sickly red-headed Jew boy. The entire family is living in this kind of slummy shack. They look diseased. Mary looks like this old hag. Joseph is very bony and lanky. You can look at the detail that's used to his, um, that Nile has, is used to depict his, his arms, his body structure. Everyone kind of looks gross here. And maybe this doesn't seem as shocking to our to our modern eyes, right, with the way that we're used to seeing things depicted. But compare Millet's depiction here of the Holy Family with any of the depictions by any of the Renaissance man, uh, Renaissance masters. The way that they've typically, in the Renaissance style, would depict the Holy Family with very full bodies. They're dressed in these sumptuous garments in the traditional Roman style. The, the Adoration of the Magi, I know I've done a video on that, is an excellent example of that. And when you compare that style, a Renaissance or medieval style of painting the Holy Family with something like this, you can begin to appreciate why this painting was so shocking to viewers and why it was so controversial and why it played such a huge role in the eventual development of realism.